Yeah, as we saw there, Jacinta Allen has well and truly taken over as leader of Victoria. She was sworn in yesterday alongside her new look team. Now, Premier Allen and her cabinet inherit a pretty massive task to deliver projects and also they've got to stay in debt. But how will her leadership differ from Daniel Andrews? And what are the challenges that she faces? Joining me now is Red Bridge Group Director Simon Welsh. Simon, great to see you. So in the polling, in the data, in the focus groups, what is that shadow, that loom, that looming figure of, of Daniel Andrews? I'm sure still looms large over Jacinta Allen. And how does that, you know, play out between now and the next election? Yeah, thanks, Laura. Yeah, some some pretty big shoes to fill. Um, uh, quite a quite a personality in the in the domestic scheme of Australian politics. Of um, uh, the cast, it does cast a long shadow. It's, I think, what's really important to understand, and and you sort of alluded it to there in, in your introduction, is Daniel Andrews created this this persona of of a conviction politician in, in a way that's that's quite difficult for a sort of a mainstream major party politician to to do. Uh, and, you know, and, and one person's conviction politician is another person's dictator, right? So, so you get that sort of that sort of tension around around the persona. And, and, and there were two two things that keep coming up in, in all the work that we did over a number of years that that sort of defined him as as this, as I say this kind of conviction politician. That the first was sort of a, a commitment to social progressive issues. That was that was tuned very well to the changing demographic that we saw in in the Victorian electorate over the periods of, of his premiership. So, um, you know, you saw the rise of of millennials and, and younger gen uh, Gen X voters as a political force um, in some key electorates, starting to outnumber the number of boomers, and and also the diversity in in Melbourne. And, and so that social progressive kind of commitment really spoke to those voters. But he coupled that with an ability to sort of raise infrastructure up to a up to a values level. So their commitment to to build big projects and even break a few eggs on the way through uh, appealed to particularly a certain type of sort of soft liberal voter uh, and brought them over to to the Labor pile. But importantly, conveyed that message of you know we're we're a government. I am a leader who's going to get things done, whether you like it or not. Sometimes. Um, and that made a whole bunch of other things possible. It, it made a whole bunch of other things believable. You know, when, when Daniel Andrews said he was going to do something, he'd do it. The social progressive side, I, I think, is pretty safe. And I think you'll continue to, continue to see that under, under Premier Allen and, and the later government. That demography isn't changing. In fact, Melbourne's probably getting more diverse and younger, if anything, the electoral roll is getting younger, if anything, uh, over, the, over the coming period. So I think that's a pretty safe space. The infrastructure space, I think, is going to be far more challenging. And, and, and as a key pillar of that kind of conviction, that's going to be that's going to be really challenging. And, and it's not so much a political story, it's an economic story. You know, the access to cheap money, the, the, the state debt, those sorts of things just make it harder to deliver so many uh, of these projects. So I think there's going to be, uh, I think Jacinda Allen's going to be faced with some tough calls about which projects to proceed with, which to shelve or to postpone. And we've already seen that with the Commonwealth Games to some extent. I think there's probably more of that in our future. Mm. And so the political radar on which projects and how to frame those decisions about what we're pulling and what we're not, I think that's going to be a real challenge going you know, in, into the next election even. Yeah, I think so too. Big challenge for Jacinta Allen. On the flip side, there could be this feeling among voters where it feels like a new government. Uh, therefore, they don't feel like they need to switch sides to the Liberal Party. And that could be a real challenge for Pursuito, couldn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's it, there, there was a sense, I mean, as I say, that the, the division around Andrews, you know, that, that conviction politics has an equal and opposite reaction sometimes. Um Post-COVID, that 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 and that that's a hard thing to shake. And I think I think the I think the change does give the the Labor government an opportunity to to sort of warm warm up its kind of relationship with with, with cohorts of voters that wouldn't have been possible with, with Daniel Andrews. Absolutely, but the Vic Libs more broadly, it's 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 a relevancy problem that they've got that's that's kind of of their own making, even more so than than you know any leadership change or, or change of style within the Labor Party. 
um, you know, that they continue in their messaging and even in some of their policies, you know, to talk to a base that is shrinking. Then they're just not engaging this this younger, progressive, diverse, particularly Melbourne, but, but Victoria more broadly, um, uh, in in any kind of meaningful way. So, so I think they've got problems of their own making before, um, you know, any sort of change on the labour side even even has an impact. Yep, I think you're right, Simon Welsh. Always good to talk to you. Thanks so much. Thanks, Laura.